Hi guys, welcome back to Wong Chemistry channel. For today's video is the part 7 of your 5.1 gas. And in this video, we are going to talk about one new law that called Dalton's law. So we are going to discuss what is Dalton's law, what is the formula of Dalton's law, how to use the formula, and of course, some examples of the calculations. So make sure you pick up your pen, some papers, and your calculator and do the calculation together with me. All right. So Dalton law stated that the total pressure of a mixture of non-reacting gases is the sum of the partial pressure exerted by each of the gas in the mixture. So there are two types of pressure over here. First is the total pressure. So that is our total pressure. The total pressure is the sum of our partial pressure. So we are going to look at what is actually total pressure, what is actually partial pressure different. Okay, but before that, what does this sentence mean? So for example, I have my gas A, I have my gas B. Okay, they are different gas and both of the gas having a partial pressure. This is what we mean by partial pressure, okay? The pressure only for gas A, the pressure only for gas B, okay? So what happened is I mix up my gas A and gas B into a mixture. So I produce a gas A plus gas B. So what would be the total pressure in this mixture? And what Dalton's law trying to say, the total pressure over here will be the partial pressure of the gas A plus the partial pressure of the gas B, okay? So we already have the partial pressure of gas A, which is 1.2 atm, and the partial pressure of the gas B, 3.4 atm. Therefore, the total pressure will be easily 4.6 atm. So that is what Dalton's law trying to tell you. When you have a mixture of gas, the total pressure of the mixture will be the sum of the partial pressure of each gases. Okay, but we have some condition for this thing to happen. First and foremost, the condition is your gas A and B must be non-reacting to each other. All right. Your gas A and B cannot react and cannot form a new thing. So I hope you can see that my gas A over here into the mixture is still remain your gas A. Can you see that? So your gas A and your gas B, all right, that is your gas B, will remain your gas B, all right? And we are not forming a new thing. There is no new product in here. So your gas A and gas B must be non-reacting and not forming a new product, okay? First condition. The second condition is the volume over here must remain constant, all right? And this can be easily observed in this example. If you look at my size of my container over here, before the mixture and after the mixture, the volume of the container is the same, all right? Because we know that when volume change, your pressure will change. Remember your Boyce law, where your volume is inversely proportional with your pressure. So to ensure that we can use the partial pressure of A given in the total pressure, all right, to ensure that the partial pressure of A is remain 1.2, the partial pressure of B is remain 3.4, the volume must remain constant, all right? Because when the volume change, the pressure change, okay? The next condition is your temperature. Your temperature over here in the Dalton's law also must remain constant. And the same reason why your temperature must remain constant over here is because when your temperature change, your pressure will also change. I hope you remember your combined gas law where you have your P1V1 over T1 
equals to P2 V2 over T2. So from here you can see when your temperature is changing, your pressure will also be changing. So the same thing to ensure that we can use this pressure, the temperature must remain constant. Okay. And last but not least, the number of mole of all the gases also must remain constant. Okay. If you can look at the diagram very carefully and details, if you look at my gas A, I started my gas A with six of them. All right. And after the mixture, my gas A is still remain six of them. First and foremost, this represents my gas A does not react with my gas B. First thing. Second thing, it means that the number of mole of my gas A is remain constant. Okay. Then only the partial pressure will remain constant because when the number of mole change, the pressure will definitely change. Okay. So this is what Dalton's law trying to tell you. Very simple. When you have a mixture of A plus B, then the total pressure will be the partial pressure of A plus with the partial pressure of B. Simple, right? With a few conditions, the gas must be non-reacting. The volume of the container must remain constant. The temperature must remain constant. And the number of mole of each of the gases must remain constant. So that we can add them up just like that. Alright? Simple. So this is the formula of your Dalton's law. This is a general formula. And if you look at my formula, my total pressure equals to partial pressure A plus B plus C. It means that in my container right now, we have gas A, we have gas B, and also we have gas C. So your total pressure will be equal to your partial pressure A plus partial pressure B plus partial pressure C. So what happens if my container have more than that? If my container having gas P, gas Q, gas R, gas T. So over here, your total pressure will then be the partial pressure of each and every one of them added up. So the number of partial pressure over here would depend on how many gas you have in your mixture. All right. If using the example just now, you only have gas A and B. So your total pressure will be partial pressure of A plus B. But if you have more than A and B, then the total pressure will be the addition of each and every single one of the gases in the mixture. Okay. And there's something that I want to remind you over here, knowing that your pressure can have a lot of different unit, your ATM, your tor, your millimeter mercury, your pascal, your kilo pascal. All right. But because we are doing addition over here, guys, mathematic wise, the unit of each and every of your partial pressure must be the same before you can add them up. Okay. Make sure the unit of every pressure is the same throughout the same question. Okay. Simple. That is what Delta's law is trying to tell you. Okay. All right. And before we go for calculation, there is something more that I want to introduce in this video is partial pressure. Because everything about Dalton's law is about the addition of the partial pressure. So what is actually partial pressure? So partial pressure is the pressure produced by one gas in a mixture at a fixed volume, temperature, and of course, number of mole. So partial pressure is the pressure of only one gas. For example, gas A. And how do we calculate the partial pressure? Simple. We can use the formula given over here. And I hope you realize that this formula is actually coming from your ideal gas. PV equals to NRT. But because the pressure that we are looking for is only the pressure of my gas A, for example. Therefore, the number of mole must be the number of mole of my gas A. All right? The R is a constant, temperature is the surrounding. The volume will definitely be also the volume of the container of the gas A, all right? And since it's coming from the ideal gas equation, 
Therefore, the unit for every single one of them must be as what we learn in the ideal gas. Your number of mole over here must be in mole, of course. Your volume must be in litre. Your temperature must be in Kelvin, all right? And your R value 100% depends on the pressure value. If your pressure is an ATM, then your R must be 0 0.08206. I hope you remember that, okay? Or if your pressure right now is in kilopascal, then your R must be in an 8.314 values, okay? So this entire formula coming from ideal gas, therefore all the rules that we apply in ideal gas will apply in here as well especially the unit. I hope you can see the importance of the unit in your ideal gas equation, okay? So for example, I have a fixed volume over here, 5 liter. Temperature is 20 degrees Celsius and 20 degrees Celsius changing to Kelvin, 273.15. My temperature right now is at 293.15 Kelvin, okay? This is my temperature, that is my volume. So, what is the condition? I have my gas A, gas B, and the gas A plus B mixture over here. The volume is the same. I hope you can see that the volume over here remain constant. Alright, 5 liter. The temperature remain constant as well. Alright, 20 degrees Celsius or 293.15 Kelvin. How do we find the partial pressure of A and B? Simple. The formula that we used just now, partial pressure of A equals to the number of mole of A, RT, constant, and also volume, constant, 5 liter. Okay, so for example, of my gas A over here, the number of mole is given 0 0.25. So to find the partial pressure of A, you are using the number of mole, RT over volume. So the number of mole is 0 0.25. Your R is a constant, 0 0.08206. If the R that I use over here is a 0 0.08206, that means the pressure that we are calculating is in ATM. I hope you realize that, okay? And the temperature is constant, 293.15. And the volume is constant at 5 liter in this question. Therefore, the partial pressure of my gas A calculated will be 1.2028 unit, guys, ATM. Why the unit is ATM? Because the R value that we chose is 0 0.08206. Can you see that? Simple. All right. Well, for your gas B, how to find the gas B? Then the gas B will be the partial pressure of B equals to the number of mole of B, RT. Over volume, the same formula, but the only thing's different is the number of mole. Because we are finding the partial pressure for gas B. So the number of mole must be the number of mole of gas B. And your R over here, constant 0 0.08206. And the temperature, 293.15. Okay, volume remain constant guys, 5 liter because they are in the same condition. Same temperature, same volume, all right? And the partial pressure that you calculate over here, again, will be in ATM. Why the value again in ATM? Because the R that we use again, all right? The same reason. And the partial pressure calculated, 3.4159 ATM. Simple, easy. And according to Dalton's law, how do we find the total pressure? The P total will be equals to the partial pressure of A plus the partial pressure of B. Make sure the unit is the same before you plus them, before you add them up, okay? So the partial pressure of A, 1.2028 ATM plus with 3.4159 ATM. So when you add them up, you will have your total pressure calculated. 4.6187 ATM. So that is how we find the total pressure. Simple. Okay. 
by using a very similar formula from your ideal gas. We are only changing it a little bit by changing the number of mole. So when you change the number of mole, the pressure that you calculate will be specifically for that particular gas. Alright, simple. But before we proceed, I want to show you another method which is even easier to find the total pressure if you already have the number of mole of each of your gases. How do we find that? We are going to use a very similar formula, but since we are finding the total pressure, therefore the formula that you use can be the number of mole total times with the RT over with the volume. Okay, since we know that the pressure will be affected by the number of mole. So if I'm looking for the partial pressure of A, then I will use the number of mole of A. But since I'm looking for the total pressure, then I can use the number of mole total. So the number of mole total over here, your N total, can be the number of mole A plus with your number of mole B. We already have the number of mole of your gas A. We already have the number of mole of your gas B. So your number of mole total can be as simple as 0 0.25 plus 0 0.71. And that will give rise to your number of mole total, 0 0.96 mole. And having your number of mole total, you can bring your number of mole total into this formula. Okay, so substitute in your number of mole total, 0 0.96. Your R still 0 0.08206. It's the same question. So the temperature remained 293.15 Kelvin. Volume remain 5 liter. And if you press your calculator, you realize that the total pressure that we calculate over here by using this method will be exactly the same as the one that we just calculated, which is 4.6187 ATM. So why the value is the same? Simple, because we play around with the formula. Since we are looking for the total pressure, then we can use the number of mole total straight away. See that? Okay, so depends on the question. If the question asking only for the total pressure, then you can use this. But if the question asking for what would be the partial pressure of A and what would be the partial pressure of B, if the question still asking for the partial pressure, then you must use the method just now. You must calculate one by one over here before you add them up. Okay, so it very much depends on the question, which one are we going to use or how we are going to answer. Simple, easy. So partial pressure have another formula where you have your PA equals to XA times PT. So over here, I want to remind you there are a times. All right, there are a times over there. It's a multiply. Okay. So we know that the PA over here represents partial pressure of your gas A, okay? And your PT over here is your pressure total. Your T over there is your pressure total. And of course, your partial pressure A, your partial pressure total, both of them again must be in the same unit since they are sitting in the same formula. So the question will be, what is actually XA? If you remember XA in your topic 1 when we learn about mole fraction, that is your mole fraction. So your XA equals to the number of mole of your gas A over with the number of mole total. So your XA is actually the mole fraction. And if the question asking for the XA then will be the number of mole A divided by the number of mole total. But what happens if the question asking for XB, the partial pressure of B, then we will need the mole fraction of B. The mole fraction of B will then be NB over N total. Okay, see that? And when do we use the XB? Definitely when we are looking for the partial pressure of B equals to your mole fraction of the B times with the total pressure. See that? 
okay simple but a bit of trick over here to teach you guys a bit of tips if in the mixture you only have guess a and also guess b if there are only two guess in your mixture then your x a plus your x b must be equals to one why because they are fraction they are ratio okay when they are fraction or when they are ratio the total of your fraction must be equals to one see that in the other words if i already have my mole fraction a then i can find my mole fraction b easily my mole fraction b can be just one minus mole fraction a see that simple okay with one condition there is only two guesses in your mixture okay if there are three guesses then the fraction of all three guesses will only equals to one see the difference the total of every fraction that you have must be equals to one in the mixture and of course this your xb must be your one minus xa minus xc okay the total fraction must be equals to one so it depends on how many fraction you have in your mixture all right simple easy so let's learn how to use the formula just now how do we use the formula of your pa equals to the mole fraction of a times with the total pressure let's see so the question having volume 5 liter temperature still 20 degrees celsius plus 273.15 i am still having 293.15 kelvin for my temperature okay temperature and volume remain constant over here so the question asking for the partial pressure of a the partial pressure of b but the total pressure is given with the number of mole of your a and also the number of mole of your b given so how do we find the partial pressure simple we need to work out the mole fraction bear that in mind the mole fraction of a will be the number of mole a over number of mole total therefore first and foremost find the number of mole total the number of mole total is definitely your a plus b because in your mixture there is only a and b so the number of mole a 0 0.25 number of mole b 0 0.71 that will give rise to 0 0.96 mole and after you have the number of mole total to find the partial pressure of gas a you definitely need the mole fraction of a so the mole fraction of a is the number of mole a over number of mole total number of mole a 0 0.25 over 0 0.96 number of mole total that will give rise to the mole fraction of a 0 0.2604 okay next we need to find the mole fraction of b and since we only have guess a and guess b guys your mole fraction of b can be as simple as 1 minus x a which is 1 minus 0 0.2604 and you will then get the mole fraction of b which is 0 0.7396 okay if you don't want to use this method you don't know when can you minus then you can use as simple as your xb equals to your number of mole b over number of mole total you can use this method and i can guarantee you the value will be exactly the same all right if you don't trust me you can press your calculator and you realize that both of this method will give rise to the same okay when you are done with the mole fraction then we can go for the partial pressure of a so partial pressure of a equals to the mole fraction of a times with the total pressure mole fraction of a 0 0.2604 total pressure 4.6 atm can you see the total pressure over here and from that the partial pressure of a will be 1.1978 and because the total pressure is in atm therefore the partial pressure
calculated also in ATM. Make sure your final answer having units, okay? Next, how do we find the partial pressure of B? You can find your partial pressure B using the same method, all right? Or, if you remember, your total pressure is equals to the partial pressure of A plus partial pressure of B. Do you realize that? All right. If your total pressure is equals to the partial pressure of A plus B, then your partial pressure B can also be the total pressure minus the partial pressure A. They are the same. Can you see that? All right. Do you realize that? So your partial pressure B can also be 4.6 minus 1.1978 where the value of the partial pressure B calculated is 3.4022 ATM. And if you don't trust that this partial pressure value that you calculated by using this method is correct, you can use this method, recalculate it because you have your partial pressure B already. All right, you can use this method to calculate it again and you realize that the partial pressure will be exactly the same. Okay, can you see that? All right, simple. Because this method is much easier. That's why I'm using this. Okay, so both formula, both methods are correct. And both are getting you the same answer. So anyone that crossed your mind during your exam or anyone that you're comfortable with, use it. All right, just be very careful with the unit. Be very careful with pressing your calculator. All right. So this is the second method to calculate the partial pressure other than using the idea gas equation. We can use mole fraction. So make sure you know how to calculate your mole fraction over here. Okay, so next let's move on to your example one. Okay, very simple question over here. A mixture of gases contains 0.3 mole of NO2 and 0.25 mole of Cl. Calculate the partial pressure of the gases if the total pressure given is 760 millimeter mercury at a certain temperature. As always, take out every value that you have. So you have your number of mole of NO2 given 0.33 mole. You have your number of mole Cl2 given, which is 0.25 mole. Okay, the question gives you the total pressure in millimeter mercury and the question asking for the partial pressure of the gases what is the partial pressure of your nitrogen dioxide what is the partial pressure of your cl2 okay with one condition guys we need to assume both of the gas is not reacting over here okay and of course in here which method are we going to use can we use the partial pressure of a equals to the num number of mole a RT over V. Can we use this method? We cannot use this method because we don't know what is the fixed volume. We don't know what is the fixed temperature. We only know that at certain temperature. So we cannot use this method over here because we don't have the volume, we don't have the temperature. And we only have two ways of calculating the partial pressure. So if this method doesn't work, then we need to go for the partial pressure A equals to the mole fraction A times with the total pressure. And we can use this method because the total pressure is given 760 millimeter mercury. We have the number of mole, so we can find the mole fraction. See that? So we are going to use this formula in this example. So to use this formula, the first and foremost, we need to find the mole fraction. And in the mole fraction, we need one thing that called number of mole total. So number of mole total will be the number of mole of your NO2 plus the number of mole of your Cl2, which is 0 0.33 plus 0 0.25. The number of mole is 0 0.58 mole. That is the total mole of your mixture. Okay. Next, in your mixture right now, you have your NO2 and NCl. That is in your mixture. We need to find the mole fraction of your NO2. The mole fraction of your NO2 is the number of mole of your NO2 over the number of mole total. So the number of mole of NO2 is 0 
number of moles total 0 0.58 that will give rise to the mole fraction of NO2 0 0.5690 okay remember our tips I told you that the mole fraction of NO2 plus the mole fraction of Cl2 will be equals to 1 so to find the mole fraction of Cl2 you can use 1 minus mole fraction of NO2 which you just calculated so 1 minus 0 0.5690 that will give rise to the mole fraction of Cl2 is 0 0.4310. So this is the mole fraction of your NO2. This is the mole fraction of your Cl2. After you are done with the mole fraction, we then can move into the partial pressure. Partial pressure of NO2 will be equal to the mole fraction of NO2 times with the total pressure. So, the mole fraction of NO2 is 0 0.5690. Total pressure given 760 millimeter mercury. Look at the unit. That is the reason why the partial pressure that you calculated over here must be in millimeter mercury because the pressure unit is millimeter mercury. So, the partial pressure of NO2 is 432.44 millimeter mercury. All right. And do we need to use the same method to calculate the partial pressure of Cl2? Yes, you can. You can use the same method to calculate the partial pressure of your Cl2. It's exactly the same. Or we can use P total equals to the total pressure must be equals to the partial pressure of NO2 plus the partial pressure of Cl2. And we have the total pressure, 760. We have the partial pressure of NO2, 432.44. And from that, we can get the partial pressure of Cl2. Can you see the trick over here? All right. So I hope you understand the concept of your Dalton's law right now. So the partial pressure of Cl2 is equals to 327.56 millimeter mercury be careful with the unit the unit remain millimeter mercury because everything is in millimeter mercury right now okay so by that in mind it's a all so any one of this will do okay any method that you use to calculate the partial pressure will give you this exact same answer if you don't trust me you can try both of the method and when you press your calculator you realize that the answer is the same up to you all right simple easy so that is how we solve Dalton's law question when you have a mixture of gas and how do we find the partial pressure if the total pressure is given or vice versa okay simple the second example that we have slightly longer question because we have a Roman 1 and Roman 2 over here let's see so I have a 7.5 closed container we have a container and the size of this container over here, the volume is 7.5 liter. Contain a mixture of 15.75 gram of carbon monoxide. So inside we have 15.75 gram of CO. And also 42.48 gram of carbon dioxide. So I have 42.48 gram of CO2 carbon dioxide. The temperature is 29 degrees Celsius. Assume that all gases are non-reacting with each other. The first question, calculate the total pressure of the gas mixture. And the second question, the partial pressure of each gas. So we need to find the total pressure, we need to find the partial pressure. So how do we solve this? We have the volume, we have the temperature, even though the temperature is not in Kelvin, change it in Kelvin first. 273.15, the temperature in Kelvin right now is 302.15 Kelvin. Okay, that is our Kelvin right now. And the question asking for the total pressure with the volume and temperature given. Therefore, you can use this formula, P total equals to the number of mole total RT over V. So we are looking for the P total. We need the number of mole total. 
All right. Why I say we need the number of mole total? Because T is given, volume is given, R is a constant. You basically have everything except the number of mole. So how do we find the number of mole? The question gives you the mass of a gas and a mass of the second gas. So from a mass, we can find the number of mole of CO. We can find the number of mole of your CO2 by using molar mass. So to answer the first question, all right, what do we need to find? The molar mass of your carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. So the MR of CO at this moment, molar mass of carbon monoxide, is your 12 plus 16. I think that is quite simple. So we have your 28 gram per mole. All right. And after you have the molar mass, what do we need to find is the number of mole of your carbon monoxide using the mass given 15.75 gram over with the molar mass that we just calculated 28 gram per mole. From here, you can get the number of mole of your carbon monoxide 0 0.5625 mole. And we are going to repeat the same thing for the carbon dioxide. So molar mass of carbon dioxide is equals to your carbon plus two times of your oxygen. And that will give rise to a 44.0 gram per mole. That is the molar mass of carbon dioxide. Quite simple. Number of mole carbon dioxide, something you definitely can do. The mass 42.48 gram over by the molar mass. So you can get the number of mole of carbon dioxide, which is 0 0.9655 mole. And by the mind, guys, in the first question, we are looking for the total pressure. So to find the total pressure, we need the number of mole total. Number of mole total is the number of mole of your carbon monoxide plus the number of mole of your carbon dioxide. That's why you need to add up the both number of mole that we just calculated. So you have your 9655 for carbon dioxide. Work out the total number of mole, which is 1.528 mole. And this number of mole calculated is the total number of mole. So this is what we want. Okay, next the question asking for the total pressure. So you can use the formula of your P total equals to the number of mole total RT over V. So the number of mole total, we just calculate 1.528, the constant R 0 0.08206, all right? The temperature 302.15, the volume is a 7.5 liter. And the pressure that you calculate from this formula is 5.0515. My question, what would be the unit of this total pressure that you just calculate? Because of the R that you are using is 0 0.08206, therefore the pressure must be in ATM. Can you see that? Alright, that is how we determine the unit of pressure. By looking at what is the R value, your gas constant value that you use, okay? And I love to find everything in ATM because the value will be much, much smaller. Okay? And you are done with the first question. Total pressure, you got it there. Alright? The next question asking for the partial pressure of the gas. The partial pressure for every gas that we have, which is your partial pressure of CO and also your partial pressure of your CO2. Okay? But in the previous slide, we have calculated a few things that we are going to use again in here. For example, number of mole of CO, number of mole of CO2. All right, we already have this just now. Another one that we need, the total number of mole. All right, last but not least is definitely the total pressure as your final answer in your Roman one just now. This is the things that we will use from your previous calculation, okay? So how can we find the partial pressure? We can use the formula of your mole fraction. Why mole fraction? Because we have the number of mole, we have the total pressure. So find the mole fraction of your CO. 
mole fraction of your CO equals to the number of mole of your CO over the number of mole total. The number of mole CO is your 0 0.5625. The number of mole total, 1.528 mole. Okay, from here, we can get the mole fraction of your CO. 0 0.3681, that is our mole fraction of CO. Okay, and after you get the mole fraction of CO, you can work out the partial pressure of CO straight away. So partial pressure of CO, carbon monoxide, equals to the mole fraction of your carbon monoxide times with the total pressure that you have already in your first part. So the mole fraction, 0 0.3681. The total pressure is a 5.0515. From here, you can easily work out your partial pressure of your carbon monoxide. 1.8595 and guys unit what would be the unit your total pressure is in atm all right therefore your partial pressure also must be in atm all right so the first partial pressure so for the second partial pressure for your pco2 do i need to repeat the whole thing no why not because we already have the total pressure Knowing that your total pressure is the partial pressure of carbon monoxide plus the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Okay, so you already have the total pressure which is 5.0515 equals to the partial pressure of CO 1.8595 and then you are looking for the partial pressure of CO2. Easy. You work out the partial pressure of CO2 straight away, even without working out the mole fraction. So the partial pressure of CO2 calculated is 3.192 atm. That is how we work out the another partial pressure of gas in our mixture. Okay, so for the question 2, partial pressure of each gas. Partial pressure of each of the gas. And you are good to go. You're done. Easy. See that? Very simple question. Okay? Make sure you know when to use this formula. Make sure you know when to use this formula. And you're good to go. Be very careful with the unit because all of this formula coming from ideal gas equation. That's why your temperature must remain in Kelvin. Your volume must remain in liter. So be extremely careful with the unit and you should be good to go. All right. And I hope you're ready for the third example. And until this moment, I hope you are actually holding up a pen and actually doing the exercise together with me. Don't watch my video like watching Netflix is not going to help. Okay. Make sure you're holding a pen, a few pieces of paper and your calculator and press the calculator together with me. All right. So for your example three over here. We have vessel A contain 2.15 liter of gas P. So let me draw that out for you. We have our vessel A. We have our box A over here. And in the vessel A, you have your gas P. And your gas P over here, having a volume of 2.15 liter, having a pressure of 0 0.275 atm. Okay, are connected. By a closed valve, so it's right now closed to a vessel B. So in your vessel B, you have gas Q. Alright, in your vessel B, right now you have your gas Q where the volume is 1.65 liter. Okay, and the pressure over here is 0 0.889 atm. So the question say, both of the vessels are placed at room temperature. So room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius or 298.15 Kelvin. Okay. Assume both gases are non-reactive to each other and the temperature remain constant. So the number of mole remain, the temperature remain. The question asks you to calculate the partial pressure and the mole fraction, both of them, of the two gases after the valve is open so we need to open this valve and then we calculate the partial pressure and the mole fraction 
I don't know whether you realize or not, once this is open, all right, once this is open, what is the main thing that is changing? The total volume. Because your guess A is located in this box, all right? This box is 2.15 liter. Your B, your box B, your vessel B is a 1.65 liter. And when we open the valve, when the two vessel, the two box connected, what is the main thing that is changing? The volume total is changing. The volume total will be 2.15 liter plus 1.65 liter. So the volume total will be 3.8 liter. That is what happened. Okay. And guys, we have everything over here. Every, every information that we have over here, the pressure that we have is at volume 2.15. The pressure that we have is at volume 1.65. But the pressure that we want is after the valve is open, where the volume is changing. So guys, the problem over here is the volume is not constant and the volume is changing. So when the volume change, what happened? Pressure will definitely be changing as well. All right? But the only thing that remain constant, what remain constant? You realize that the amount of gas remain constant, number of mole remain constant, the temperature remain constant. And do this thing look familiar to you? When the volume change, the pressure change, but the temperature and number of mole remain constant. Guys, that is your boy's law. All right, that is your boy's law. And if you remember your boy's law, what did boy's law say? All right, the formula in boy's law is your P1 V1 equals to your P2 V2. Remember that? So let's say your condition one is before opening the valve, okay? And your P2 over here is after we open the valve. So what is changing in here? Your V1 is the volume that we use before we open. Your V2 is the volume that we use after we open. In the other words, your V2 must be 3.8 liter, okay? So we want to find the new pressure of your gas P and your gas Q when the valve is open, all right? So for the gas P over here, the formula that we use, P1 V1 equals to P2 V2. The P1 of your gas before we open is 0 0.275 atm. So by that in mind, our P1 V1 is before we open the valve. Before we open the valve, this is what we have, okay? 0 0.275 atm where the volume is 2.175. So we are looking for the new pressure after we open the valve, okay? So the P2 is what we are looking for where the volume is 3.8 because we have opened the valve and both of the A and B container connected to each other. So the volume increased. So, the partial pressure 2 that we are looking for equals to 0 0.1556 atm. And guys, the P2 is actually the partial pressure of your gas P after valve is open. Okay, that is your P2. Alright, and then for the gas Q, the same thing for the gas Q guys. Gas Q over here using P1 V1 equals to P2 V2. The pressure 1 is before we open. So before we open is the volume 1.65, the pressure 0 0.889. So pressure 0 0.889 atm, volume 1.65. Looking for the new pressure after we open the valve, where the volume changed to 3.8. So you have your P2 of your gas Q calculated is 0 0.5416 atm. And bear that in mind, the P2 over here is the partial pressure of your gas Q after valve is open. Okay, see that? So this is the answer for the partial pressure of the gas 
after the valve is open. As simple as your boy's lock. I hope you realize that the volume change when this thing open. When the valve is open, both of the container will be connected to each other. All right. When both of the container or the vessel connected to each other, the volume change. And when the volume change, the pressure change. As simple as using your boy's law calculation. All right. And we are not done because we only done finding the partial pressure. We need to find the mole fraction. And how do you find the mole fraction of your gas P and your gas Q? Simple. We have the partial pressure for both of the gas after the valve is open. We can work out the total pressure after the valve is open. Okay. So to find the total pressure after the valve is open, we need to have the pressure of your gas P. And your pressure of your gas Q after the valve is open. Okay, both of this is after the one that we calculate just now. And the value for the partial pressure P after the valve is open is 0 0.1556 atm. And for the gas Q after the valve is open is 0 0.386 atm. The one that we just calculate for the partial pressure. Okay. Therefore, the total pressure is 0 0.5416 atm. And to find the mole fraction of your gas P, use as simple as the formula, partial pressure of your P equals to the mole fraction of P times with the total pressure that you just calculate. The partial pressure of P, we have it just now, 0 0.1556 equals to the mole fraction that we are looking for and the total pressure that you just calculate 0 0.5416 from here you can work out the mole fraction of your gas p which will equals to 0 0.2873 simple one answer down and then the next one is the mole fraction of your gas q knowing that in this entire question we only have two gas Gas P, gas Q. Therefore, the mole fraction of your gas P plus the mole fraction of your gas Q must be equals to 1. Agree on that? Okay, we mentioned this just now when we discussed about mole fraction. So the mole fraction of gas P calculated 0 0.2873 plus the mole fraction of gas Q we are looking for equals to 1. Therefore, the mole fraction of your gas Q equals to 0 0.7127. As simple as this. Okay? And of course, if you want to find the mole fraction of your gas Q using this formula, it's absolutely fine. You still can get your mole fraction of Q. It will be the exactly same answer. Again, if you don't trust me, Press your calculator and work it out, okay? And because I want to expose you to a different solution, that's why I'm teaching you this. And of course, if you want to use the exact same method, all right, like we calculate for the P, feel free to do so. It's the same. Anyone that is easier for you, anyone that you understand, do it, okay? But that in mind, mole fraction have no unit because it's a fraction, it's a ratio, okay? So that is the mole fraction of your gas P calculator. That is the mole fraction of your gas Q calculated after the valve is open. I want to remind you again, after the valve is open, what is changing? The volume of the container is changing. The total volume is changed. When the total volume change, that's why you have a new partial pressure. Okay, simple. And I think that's it for Delton's law on how to use the formula and understand the formula. And I think I'll give you a few examples that are different. All the three examples that we discussed are using a different approach. So I hope you understand clearly on how to use all the formula in Delton's law. And the most important thing, not only to use, but to understand what Delton's law is trying to tell you. Okay? If you have any question, drop it in the comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And remember to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you again in the next video.
Pocket.com.